Hey everyone, BT out here, and on today's episode, we're gonna learn how to get your TDI ready for timing. So let's get to work because this is BTL's garage. For us to get this car ready for uh, a timing job, this is a nine. This is a 2001 Volkswagen Jetta TDI with an ALH motor, which means it has the external fuel pump. Um, it doesn't have the pump induced, aka a common rail, uh, also known as a BEW um, TDI motor. What we need to do is get ready to do this job. So this is a two-parter. On this first part, we're going to get the engine ready for this big job. So we have to take out pretty much the boost pipes here, all the way down to the bottom. Uh, we got to take out the lower boost pipe, the upper boost pipes, timing cover. We got to take, not out, but move out of the way the coolant line, the coolant uh, reservoir. The power steering reservoir it has to be unbolted so you can move it over to make room for the... Um, the, mo uh, no, the motor mount to come out and also to allow you to take the motor mounts that are in here out and the timing cover and everything else out. Plus we have to remove the accessory belt. Um, that way the engine is ready for a timing job. Once we get all that done, my friend Brandon tomorrow was gonna come in and he's gonna walk us through and how to do the entire proper job because we have to remove the valve cover and get a sealant for that. And we're going to remove, when we remove the valve cover, we're actually going to be taking out the camshaft, the lifters. So we're going to give that whole head a complete refresh. Um, once that's done, we're going to swap out the water pump, the, um, the, what is it, the timing belt. We're going to reinstall and remove the cam gear, install a new, uh, not new cam gear, but re, re, reinstall the cam gear. Um, there's a lot of things we're going to be doing. Um, we're also going to learn how to time these engines and lock them. There's actually a very specific set of tools that you need to lock these guys down. So be ready to have your pen, paper out, and get ready for tools. Um, you're looking at least about $200 worth of tools to do this job correctly. And that way you have less errors down the road and possibly not destroy your engine. So right now, I'm just prepping... Uh, getting this guy pretty much removed or try to This guy has to come off okay this is your first pipe once that's removed kind of fish these out don't remove them don't remove these lines okay guys there's a wire that goes over here fishes through okay all you want to do is just take it out of the way take this out of the way next step here is get your cooling ball ready Okay, I'm showing you everything that's on top and then we're gonna work our way down underneath the car. Uh, we recommend removing the passenger tire. So make sure your car's on jack stands. The coolant ball is held by two Phillips screws and another clamp down below here. So we got a Phillips screw here. Over here. Okay. 
once you get that removed, you're going to pull this up. And then there's another clamp right down here. This is a tricky one, so you got to find a good spot to grab onto it. Once you get that broken loose, get that out of the way. So here you can unbolt the, um, that's not good. <laughs> You can unbolt the power steering line and just move it over. This gives you access to the motor mount. Um, there's two 16s here, and then there's gonna be two 18s on the actual motor mount itself. You need to get this pipe out of here as well. Um, if you have access, which I think I might do, Hoping I do. Hmm. Nope. So this sucks. I wanted to get the uh, the clamp out. I have no way. Oh. to do is unbolt the, the lower intercooler hose from the bottom of the engine and then once that's unbolted take the three 10 millimeter bolts that surround the intercooler so it gives you room to turn it and I was able to turn the actual pipe just enough to get a clamp in there how many pliers in there and literally I'm able to pull this guy out now ever so slowly Being very careful with these lines. I don't want to damage these lines at all. There we go. But I broke the headlight, I think. That's great. I didn't break the lines, yay. Okay, so there's this boost hose. I think. I'll have to figure that out later. Hopefully I can take care of that. I'm not gonna look at that <laughs> until much later. So, this is what was giving me all this trouble, was that clamp. So, now that we have the intercooler pipe out of the way, which was a pain, headlight cable unplugged, next step is the power steering line, I mean a reservoir has to be unbolted. We took the wheel off, we took the passenger side wheel off, okay? Um, we're gonna have to take the lower intercooler pipe off as well. That way we can access the front of the uh, engine so we can get the belt on and get all the timing components removed. Um, this is a perfect time to loosen the bolts that are on the harmonic balancer or the 
the lower crank pulley, okay guys? It's a perfect time to do that. If you haven't done it yet, I recommend going down there and getting that done. We'll walk you through that when we get to that point. Um, I'm getting ready to get this last piece up here loosened up, and then we're gonna work our way down. All right, so after we got this all taken off, we'll now is to take the clamp off down here. We have this one. There's a clip right on this pipe right here. So you don't have to go all the way to the turbo and remove it. Just got to go to this little pipe. So much mud. And pull it off all the way. Okay. So there's a 10 millimeter here, a clip here, and then the clamp right here. This gives you access to the Harmonic balancer here, which is very important next step. Before you do anything else, break loose these bolts right here while the belt is attached. Um, this will allow you, it prevents you from trying to counter hold anything. The belt puts enough tension on this so you can um, break them loose and have them ready for the next step. Can you see my finger? Yeah. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me. I get a 16 wrench and a secondary wrench so you can pull on this tensioner up so you can get the belt off. Just like that. I don't recommend doing it from the top because it is very difficult. So you guys can see here, do your extend your ghetto extension, put a 16 on the on the uh, actual tensioner. You do this, and this makes an extension if you do like this, and you can use this for leverage. Uh, once you do that, the belt should come right off. routing I will walk you through on how to route the belt properly on this car okay next step is that we have to take off the actual tensioner so there's 113 two we'll find the other ones I think there's more than just two. Oh, three. I count three right now one two three let me grab the new tensioner So this is the new tensioner, like I was showing you before. You're gonna grab your wrench from the bottom of the car, like that. And then you're gonna use this guy for leverage to put your tension and get that belt off. Once you do that, there's three bolts. The third one's kind of hidden, so you'll see one, two, three. These three have to be removed so the tensioner comes off. This is the one that's hiding behind the power steering pump. Um, you shouldn't have to take the pump off. I'll find out right now when we get to that point. But these are the three that we have to worry about, okay? And they're 13s. Okay. So you have the power steering line and a coolant line attached to it. Get a little two, two to three inch extension with a deep socket. And you should be able to reach one. Two and number three. All three bolts can be reached without taking out the or removing the power steering pulley. So you guys are in luck with that. Now the reason why the tensioner has to come out, number one, we got a brand new one. Number two, it's in the way of our timing setup. So we have to remove that. Is 
It's also part of the high mileage kit. Whenever you guys start dumping a dump bunch of miles on these cars, because that's what these motors are known for, is for literally going forever. If you want this car to keep going on forever, you do have to maintain it. Maintenance is key on anything, any VW you own and quality parts. You guys got to make a mental note of this one because there's three different there's two uh two different kinds of bolts there's two short ones and one really long one the long one is for this far bottom left one two short ones are for the right got it very important all right set that aside all right now the power steering uh, reservoir is moved out of the way You'll see here, we have access to the two 18 bolts here for the motor mount itself. Okay, there's two 16 bolts here and then two 13 bolts right over here. These, all this has to come off, okay? Before you take these off, make sure you get a block of wood, put it underneath your car and jack up your engine about an inch. Um, that's gonna take the relief of the pretty much the motor mount off of here, the stress off the motor mount. So when you start unbolting things, your engine's not gonna drop and you're gonna have the engine supported. So when you get ready to start taking stuff out from the timing or from the engine bay, you'll have the room to do it, okay? Now that we have the engine supported with the jack and a piece of wood underneath on the oil pan, the reason why we put a piece of wood because it's an aluminum oil pan. So we wanna prevent any bending whatsoever uh, or cracking of our pen since we have a brand new pen on this car. We don't want to damage it That's another reason why we have a skid plate So we don't damage that we damage the skid plate before we damage our oil pan Because believe me swapping oil pans are a pain in the butt I'd rather just swap a skid plate So brackets removed from the motor mount. The bolts have fallen down here. Okay, we're gonna do the two 16s on the side. Let me go grab that. We'll no longer need our wrenches, so those will be put away. broken loose second one okay now that the motor mounts are on uh, the motor mount is unbolted we now have to remove this motor mount which is an 18 all right. Make sure you have a ratchet with some leverage or use a breaker bar because these go on pretty dang tight. That did not go on. <laughs> I think these have gone through too much off-road abuse. So they're coming off pretty easy. It's not good, I'll tell you that. Make 
Okay, now with the hardware removed. This side of the engine is now officially unbolted. So that means it's not being supported by the motor mount. The engine is now being supported strictly by the jack, okay? There's three 16 millimeter bolts right down here. We have one, come on, one, two back here, and the third one's down all the way at the bottom. You have to unbolt those next because we need the space to take all the stuff off the, uh, the timing cover. You can take the upper timing cover off, which will reveal all your other components here. You guys can see you have the roller, uh, cam gear, the mechanical pump gear. This is the idler pulley or the tensioner pulley, water pump down below. And then all the way at the bottom, there's another roller. And then all the way at the bottom is the crank gear. Um, the crank gear. So you have a bunch of components here. There's more than a 1.8T. So, and these are very specific to time. So you have to be super, super careful on how to time these. That's why we're doing a part one and a part two on how to do this job, all right? A lot of people get sketched out or freaked out because we're taking a lot of stuff off. And I 100% I, I agree with you. I would be sketched out as well. So this is why we're doing it in two pieces so you guys can do it and take your time, all right? So next step is taking the actual main motor mount off, which is this guy here, which requires three 16 bolt removals. All right, so come on over here. So what we have, that's another reason why you need to make sure the car is on, uh, on a jack and a piece of wood, so you can lower the engine about two inches down so you can access the third bolt down below. Once you access it, don't go all the way down. Don't let this motor mount hit the frame because it has a possibility of getting jammed and between here and you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to yank that thing out. So try not to hit the frame about one to two inches down. It'll give you just enough space to access the 16 millimeter, the last, the third one on the bottom far left, uh, bottom left hand corner. Once you get it there, just unbolt it. Okay, and now your motor mount is completely loose, okay? It's not ready to remove yet, okay guys? There's still more uh, needed to be done to before you can actually remove that piece because it's technically jammed or wedged in between the engine. So watch out, Timmy. We're gonna lift the engine. Oh, this is what I just talked about. I just jammed it. There you go. Oh, shit. Okay, and then we go back up. So the goal is to kind of like get it out of here without damaging anything along the way. It's one of the hardest things to do because there's a lot of things in the way. But you can fish it out. Just like that. You'll see here, one, two, three bolts. This is the one that you have to push the, drop the engine just about an inch to get it out. This, to wedge it out, you have to like, fandangle it. If you come on over here, you'll see there's a cover here. See this plastic piece right here? This is what's preventing you to take it out. It's this one piece of plastic because it's preventing you to go straight up. Because of that, you have to go up higher and you have to twist the motor mount out. Kind of uh, turn it and then twist it out. Be careful, but you should be able to get it out with no problem. Once that's out, okay, you have a timing cover with one, two, three bolts. Once you have the timing cover removed, You'll see there's one, two, three 10 millimeter bolts down here. Once you remove that timing cover, you can take the harmonic balancer off or the lower crank pulley. Once you take that off, it has two more bolts down below that cover, take the cover off. And now your timing uh, preparations are ready 
for you to start. This is just to get you started to doing the timing job. This is not the actual timing job. I'm teaching you guys how to get it ready before you get freak out and see how much more difficult it gets. But it gets difficult in a easy way if you have the right tools. So, okay. So lower timing cover is now removed with the harmonic balancer removed. You should have had that already ready for that. So cam gear, you got your uh, mechanical pump, you got your tensioner pulley, water uh, water pump, idler pulley, crank uh, the crank gear, and then you have these two rollers right here. Your entire kit should include everything that you see here uh, with a new belt and everything and all the new hardware as well. Be ready, and we're gonna walk you through the next step tomorrow when Brandon shows up early in the morning and we're gonna show you how to lock the cam, lock the pump, and lock the crank before you take the belt off. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in on this episode of Pinchel's Garage. While we do a, a timing prep on a Mark IV TDI with an ALH motor. Peace out everyone, have yourself a wonderful day. And if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to look at the description below if you wanna get this kit and the entire timing uh, toolkit as well to help you do this job 100% on your own.